Hi guys, Third here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to route foam using a drill press. Uh, a few things that we're going to need to get this started is we'll need some scrap wood to make a jig. We'll need a few clamps. I've got a 5 inch C clamp and a couple of quick clamps. And then you'll need a routing bit appropriate for whatever type of channel you're trying to route. In this case I'm going to be routing for 3 8 inch round cores. So I'll be using a 3 8 inch core box uh, routing bit. This is carbide tip, uh, quarter inch shank. Setting up the jig uh, to route your foam is relatively simple. Here I've just got uh, some leftover uh, wood from various projects and I'm going to make a little base here to, to run everything on. So I'm going to be using uh, the larger piece of half inch or like three quarter to uh, give myself a nice flush surface to work with. I'm going to line it up uh, with the edge of my, my my base here. If you have a drill press that has you know a fence and all that in place you don't need to do any of this but if you just got a cheap one that didn't come with anything this is gonna help. Uh, and then I've got this piece here, I'm going to use a push plate uh, later and then I've got my uh, a piece of uh, oak uh, wood which is pretty straight which is what you're gonna want and I've marked that uh, a couple of areas off here for uh, my line. So what you want to do is find out exactly where the center of your bit is going to come down. So if we go ahead and chuck our bit a little bit more. There we go. lock that in firmly in place and with this pushed all the way back against the back there and lined up flush you want to find out exactly where your uh, the center of your bit is going to come down. In my case, my uh, drill press has a light, so I already know where it's going to come down. And you're going to mark that, uh, and you can do that in several spots. And then I drew a line here to show where the middle of my channel is. And now I do, uh, for a sword blade, I do a uh, one and a half inch wide strip. So I went half of that, three quarters of an inch out, and drew another solid line. And that's where my fence is going to be. And then when I run foam through, such as with this piece that I've already done, it would be running through, and the halfway mark would be exactly right there. So that would give me uh, half an inch on either side of a half inch routed channel, uh, or a little bit greater for a three inch routed channel. So we'll go ahead and get our uh, jig set up to start. So pushing this, back, making sure your plate, because you know if yours is like mine, it can move. Uh, when not locked in. Make sure it's as you know square as possible and take your plate, your whatever you're using, get it flush and this you're going to use your C clamp or whatever clamp you have available and go ahead and lock this in place. Now you need to adjust uh, your fence which I said I've got mine marked off so I'll get that on the line here that I have already marked and I'm going to use my quick clamps to hold that in place. And I want that to be lined up nice and flush. Remember, a shitty box is going to make a shitty sword, so if you're taking the time to do this, take the time and do it right. So we've got that fixed. Now the only thing we really need to do now is uh, adjust the height of our table, which be because my, uh, my crank for my lift is on this side, I actually have to completely undo everything and adjust it all. So I guess we'll put a video cut in there, won't we? I had to do a small cut there uh, to readjust my jig since I didn't account for my crank being on the opposite side of my drill press. So now we need to adjust for the height of the press. Now I've got uh, some scrap foam here that I'm going to use, a little bit of uh, floor mat EVA, and I want the channel to go to exactly half the depth of my bit. So this is a 3 8 inch routing bit. Uh, so half of 3 eighths would be uh, 3 sixteenths, right? So we're going to go to 
exactly half that. And you can do this uh, several ways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my uh, T-square here and I'm going to mark uh, that 3 sixteenths from the top on the foam here. And then I'll adjust my bit to go down to that depth. So. I guess I can try and get this part on camera, though it isn't exactly uh, necessary, I don't think. I think you can figure out how to how to measure, but we'll throw that in there anyway. So coming from the coming from the top of our foam, the side we're going to measure, we'll make a line three sixteenths. That's half our depth, and remember we're going to the top of that line, the side that was flush with the, the actual ruler with the marking edge. So now we'll go ahead and adjust the height of our bit, and I kind of eyeball it. If you don't have a better eye, you can try and actually uh, use a, a ruler to do that. But and I go just a little bit beyond because that that tip isn't extremely sharp. Uh, so you want to go just a little, just a hair deeper than it looks like it needs to be. And of course, make sure this is nice and flush, you know, square with the uh, staff there. You can see. Uh, let's see. Can you see? Let's zoom in a little. And turn off that damn annoying thing. So you can. There you go. You can see that the uh, the bit is just a little bit beyond the black line there that I've marked at three sixteenths of an inch depth. So now that that's in, we're going to go ahead and lock this. Uh, plate in place so that it doesn't go anywhere on us. Alright, so now we're ready to go ahead and route. Uh, I'm going to take, uh, mine has a, a safety bit out of it, and we'll plug that in. And actually, we'll plug in the drill press too. Good. And now it is ready to roll. Uh, so I don't like to to really get my hands too terribly close to the uh, spinning blade. So uh, we're going to use a, a push plate, which just give me one moment here, and we'll cut a little piece of this scrap off. There we go. And the push plate will also allow for uh, even pressure. I've marked a couple of lines on mine to try and stay in so I'm not seesawing and and screwing it up. Uh, and you want to make sure that your foam is pushed down firmly against your work surface so that your depth doesn't vary. Uh, so with that pushed against it, we can go ahead and actually route. inch routed channel. So taking a 3 eighths inch round core, that should cover exactly half. Uh, and it does not. It's a, actually a little bit deeper than that just by a hair. So I got my measurement a little bit off. So uh, really important lesson right there. Always double check your measurements and use some scrap foam. This, this stuff was already cut into and I, me I messed it up from a previous project. So I don't care that I ruined it. Take a little bit of scrap foam, get it set up and get it right before you start routing significant amounts of expensive foam. Uh, another warning, uh, if you actually read the manual that comes with any drill presses, it's going to tell you don't route with it. Um, drill presses, let's take the safety out, are not meant to have side to side pressure. They go up and down. However, routing foam doesn't really apply all that much pressure. And if you're not trying to just force pieces through, it'll work just fine. Uh, a couple of things you noticed me doing while routing was pressing down uh, 
over here as I fed the foam to make sure that it was staying flat against uh, my jig because again we don't want that varying depth and I made sure that it was pushed against it so that but no I wasn't pushing hard I was just using it as a guide uh, and then I did a back and forth motion to give myself a nice uh, a nice clean channel so there's there's really no crap in there so you need to go back and forth a few times uh, sharpen your bit regularly foam will dull bits just as wood will just not as quickly um, and yeah if you have any questions please throw them in the comments below send me a message um, otherwise that has been how to route foam with a drill press thanks for watching